Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of OSIM 1M. In this edition, we bring you a special feature on the 19th National Mask Festival, which was showcased in the New Britain province. We were given the opportunity to go to Kimbe to witness this national event, which was held there for the first time. But first, here is a brief history on how the Mask Festival came to be. Masks are an integral part of Papua New Guinea's cultural heritage. And while some are stored here in the National Museum, many remain in the rural areas or have become extinct. That is why it is so important to celebrate their existence through mask festivals. Papua New Guinea has one of the most unique mask cultures in the world. Most masks in Papua New Guinea can only be found in the Momasa region, New Guinea Islands region, and some parts of Gulf. This is due to the fact that these provinces have strong male fraternities or groups that use the masks as part of their initiation ceremonies or rituals and are often associated with spirit totemic names. It was during his master's research at ANU that the director for the National Culture Commission became aware that mass cultures of Papua New Guinea had to be preserved and revived. My, my sub-thesis was on the Ewe hair ceremony, which is from the Gulf. Yeah? And in doing this, I, I, I stumbled upon uh, a mountain of photographs which was stored in the National Library in Canberra. And it kind of worried me at that point that this was a culture which was so rich. Uh, they were probably the most majestic uh, forms of, of masks I had seen anyway, or known. Uh, because when I was doing my research for the, for the, for the sub-thesis, I covered mask cultures in, in Melanesia, uh, and also South America and Africa. And I found with the Gulf, there were 12 different masks, most of which had disappeared. They all disappeared around about the turn of the last of the, the 19th century. The last uh, heavy ceremony was probably held around about 1914. And luckily they were fairly well documented by the government anthropologist F.E. Williams. It was, uh, this, this was something which was quite dominant in terms of culture in an area. And for some reason, it just completely disappeared. And then I looked at the masks from my own area. And you start to ask questions, what is going to happen to these things? What is going to happen to Sipic masks? What is going to happen to New Island masks? What is going to happen to Medang masks? Um, if you don't do anything about them. So I started the mask festival. And so the National Mask Festival began in 1995 and was first staged in Port Moresby for a duration of four years. However, due to logistical and funding hurdles, the festival was then moved to Medang for the benefit of surrounding mask cultures from neighboring provinces. It was during this time that the then Minister for Culture and Tourism, Sir Peter Lewis, made a decree that East New Britain would become the home of the festival and there it has stayed for the last 12 years until this year. And I know there, there were some uh, uncertainties about what was happening, uh, uh, but I came in quite late into, into a situation where uh, there was preparations being done in, in West New Britain, and there was preparations being done in East New Britain at the same time. Yeah? Uh, it all came out of some kind of misunderstanding uh, uh, which, 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 which developed last year over the future of, over the, over the, 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 the holding of the, of the festival in 2013. Uh, and that's how we decided to, to give West New Britain the go, go ahead to do it. I was, I was quite clear on as to what to do, that we had given the responsibility to to West New Britain, this is where we're going to go. All our resources were going to go to West New Britain, and that was which happened actually in the end. And they said, "Oh no, we we're not looking for for resources. We just want to be able to have the mass festival here." 
but we said no. Yeah. The only thing that got them to have the name retained there was the sponsorship. That's when we made the decision that, okay, we will have the festival in New Britain, the, national, the, the 19th National Mass Festival on New Britain, huh? in Kimbe and Kokopo. Watching also one M. What began as a case of confusion on where the festival should be held, it turned out to be yet another successful event in New Britain. The also one M crew was invited by the West New Britain province to witness the event, and we must say the organisation and hospitality demonstrated during the four days was done in true spirit of the Passing West style. The Isle of West New Britain, if you like, can be seen as a huge version of a disfigured horseshoe. Situated at one end is the airport at Hoskins, and nearing the other is Kimbe Town, but further to the tip is Biala. Here, like any part of PNG, cultural heritage remains intact the further inland you travel. And for most locals in the province, the National Mass Festival means that for the first time ever, West New Britain will have the opportunity to showcase not only their cultural heritage, but to promote their province and what it has to offer in terms of tourism potential. Mipla Law, West New Britain 2. Mipla Gut, Strong Pla Culture na Custom. Mipla Yet Gut, Aipla Strong Pla Tribe Inside Long, West New Britain. Na Mipla Gut, also I'm all settlers to stop lo here. Lo contributing economic benefits, lo country na province. Na Mitak uh, Big Pla Amamas, also Mipla hosting this la function. Me acknowledge him too. Algata dignitaries come on the minister. Na to Algata Cultural Commission, Algata Cultural Group. He come lo Narapla Narapla province ali kam bunglo here lo celebrating this la national mass festival. Me wish him all, all the best. Na me tak big la tak thank you lo all the organizing committee na public too. Lo kam bunglo here lo promoting this la culture na you me witness him this la celebration lo custom na culture lo you me lo West New Britain na lo whole country. <laughs> Firstly, me talk sorry. Awesome. Even got legally confusion. It come up so me must. Even it been come up long. Two blah place long same time. Where it been got legally confusion. But me been making mine long go long is New Britain. Then me straight him ticket finish long go long Port Moresby. That's all me talk. Program ya, I mean, run long and run it long. This black government, me must go now talk hello long old past time now. Go back long, most be so. Me come come up long here. Ting him, Ogada gold na copper na silver na jing na iron. And by go one blood time. But this black culture, and by stop one time, you, he going up like you die picking in the back, kiss him. Ting him, this black culture, and belong Ogada man Mary, Sabi man. No get savvy man, low grade, uh, low level man, namel man, na uh, big blood level, under under level old man married too. He also stressed that the cultural activities promote tourism and with it income generation for locals. He also encouraged the youth to take advantage of this opportunity. Day two of the festival witnessed an array of color and spectacle, but it was the guest performers who stole the show that evening.
is Awesome Wanam. If you've just joined us, we're covering the 2013 Mask Festival, which was held in West New Britain recently. We take a look at more highlights and find out what West New Britain can offer for both local and international tourists. Festival organizers said a total of 23 groups participated in the event, two of which were from other provinces, and according to the National Culture Commission, a record 11 masks was showcased during the festival, one less than the Gulf province. The old palm plantations brought with it workers from other parts of the country, and five generations later, a mini Papua New Guinea now coexists with the people of Western Britain, making it a multicultural society. Like most provinces, West New Britain has something to offer in terms of tourism, and as always, the potential is enormous. But the lack of information and understanding of how tourism marketing works becomes a setback for most locals, leaving it up to expatriate families who are long-time residents to take the lead in developing tourism in the province. Yeah. Yeah. We're very well known for the scuba diving worldwide, Kimby Bay is one of the great, greatest centres of marine biodiversity on the planet. Where we are standing here now, when we look up to the left and we look to the right at Hoskins, in that view there, there's over half the world's species of hard corals and over 900 species of fish. Um, there's 413 species of hard corals, the world totals just under 800. So that is amazing. And it's all about marine biodiversity. Uh, this is one of the warmest seas in the world, the Bismarck Sea. And uh, it's, it's the mar marine biodiversity that's uh, very attractive to people from all over the world to, to, to see. New Britain is also an island that's very high in biodiversity even with on the land as well as the sea. And there are many species here that can't be found anywhere else. There are a number of ideal locations that visitors can utilize when in Kimbe, like Kimbe Bay Hotel, Liamo Reef Resort, and Walindi Plantation Resort. Or for the more casual visitors, there are other guest houses available too. Walindi Plantation Resort is a favorite destination for divers from all parts of the world, including Japan, Australia, USA, Europe, and Asia, offering activities like scuba diving, snorkeling, kayaking, and bird watching, which has attracted a lot of attention in recent times. This is also Monem. To close this edition, we highlight the festival's closing ceremony. As the final day of the National Mask Festival came to an end, different choir groups took center stage as the four-day event drew to a close. In his closing speech, the chairman of the festival committee commended the people of West New Britain for their participation and unity. Well, the 19th National Festival of West New Britain, the biggest sponsor, I'm sponsoring, I'm giving money to the program. Now, now you may have on this last four days. I'm West New Britain provincial government. I like give you party man or the government. One time administration man, that means our governor, Honorable Sassitan Mutuwal, with my provincial administrator, Mr. Stephen Raphael, only giving 415,000. Lord, this is a mass first of all, come up to West New Britain. We've done really well. 
I think for the first time being host here, usually it's in Kogopo. And having it come here, I think it's it's really good for our province, you know. We do have a lot of different masks, you know, from we have a lot of different masks from different areas around here and it's good to see that showcase. There are some just like everywhere else. And it's my first time here so there's gonna be a lot of critics to say that you know we haven't done well here and there but we're gonna learn from this and next year it's gonna be bigger and better. The governor also expressed the same sentiments and is positive West New Britain can make an even greater impression come next year. We are really grateful and thankful to the Department of uh, National Cultural Commission and also the Ministry uh, to choose uh, to host National Mass Festival uh, in West New Britain. It's the 19th National Mass Festival. Uh, through a letter, they have uh, requested uh, West New Britain provincial government to host it. And as a provincial government, we accepted that invitation gladly and uh, that we have uh, allocated funding of initially 200,000, which is our annual budget to host our Tavu show. Tavu show is something which uh, we hold every year as an annual activity to showcase our cultural uh, programs in the province. But since this one uh, as a national festival, uh, we also uh, released another 200,000 kina funding uh, to host this function, especially to uh, uh, the various uh, provinces al Kamlo celebrating this La Mass festival. Na stop lo Kimbe na look out the mall na performing this La Mass festival lo start lo 19th come lo 21st. That's all we have time for. But before we go, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank the West New Britain Governor and Provincial Administration for their kind hospitality and assistance for taking Osem Wanem to West New Britain. We'd also like to thank the Festival Committee, Manseng Guest House, the management and staff of Liamo Reef Resort and the Willindy Plantation Resort for their stories. Not forgetting MTV management and especially the people of West New Britain for a wonderful display of culture and unity. Next week, we bring you part two, West New Britain Province's Key Development Areas. <laughs>